Hello YouTube, here we are back again today. We're gonna do a video on Polaris snowmobile crankshafts. I've been getting a lot of requests and I figure it's easier just to make a video. So I've lined up a couple snowmobiles here. Check out this one, 89 Indy 500. This thing is mint. This is a sweet looking sled, very clean. Anyway, this is a liquid cooled version, okay? That's what the engine looks like. Very popular, built for a lot of years. They made the 400 and the 500 and a 440, different variations of the liquid cooled model. Okay, well, that's what that one looks like. Let's move over here to this Indy Sport. Now they did, now they made these ones in the, get the hood to come up, in the 440 and a 488 version okay that's what the fan cooled ones looks like so whether you have the fan cooled style or you have the liquid cooled style believe it or not they both have the same crankshaft they're both both these engines are built by fuji and i've got some crankshafts in here on the table so let's walk inside and i will uh kind of do some explanation and show you where the the differences are okay been meaning to do this for a while so the first one this is what well that's that's what they look like together this one is taken apart that's what it's going to look like taken apart the main difference is the early ones did not have a locating pin do you see this small pin that sticks up that's just a little pin in the outer race of the bearing that locates the bearing in the crankshaft so that this bear this outer race won't spin okay so that's what that pin does the early ones did not have that pin or by early i mean 84 85 um, and a lot of the rebuilders that rebuild those engines do an upgraded bearing that has an o-ring in it because that o-ring helps lock that outer race so it doesn't spin um now the big question is that I get in 1997, I believe 97, 98, the Polaris did a running change. So they had built this style of crankshaft since 84, if not earlier than that. They then went to this crankshaft in like 1997. Now when this is together, they look almost the same. The main reason, one of the main giveaways i don't even know if you can see this this crankshaft here has like a little bevel right there see that this one here does not this one's just straight if you were to measure this this right here is going to be 30 millimeters okay that's a 30 millimeter that'll be the id of the bearing the od of the bearing that goes on there at 62 outer diameter this one these bearings here are bigger this is a 32 millimeter id bearing 65 millimeter od so if you try to put this crankshaft if you mix them up or switch the the engines it's not going to fit not going to work right so the main thing is we got to know what year engine you're dealing with um, like all the older ones are interchangeable this style after 97 98 they went to First, the first thing they did is upgraded those PTO bearings. They made them bigger. I think they were having failures. They made those bigger. This guy, this one here seized up on the mag side. We got some very noisy bearings that need to be replaced. Okay. Then, I believe, 99, 2000. They said, there's another crank. This is almost the same as that one. This one here, well, this one, of course, broke, but this... And the bearing slides off, so it's well used. This is this 65 millimeter OD bearing. So if you don't know what size bearing you have, you can always measure this. This one's this same size. It fits that one. This one, it's just going to fall on. See, it does not fit at all. That's the difference. So it won't fit the older ones. Will fit the new style. Now, I was mentioning they made another change. They went from... So this bearing is the same size as this one. Okay, that's on there. It's the larger bearing, but look at this. See these two mag ends? Now this mag end had a wide bearing on it. This one had a narrow bearing. 
Now, if you're ever confused, no, okay, see this keyway? Look at those differences too. So when you're looking yours up, we need to know which style you have. Do you have the style that has the narrow bearing with that keyway slot? Granted, they both line up at 12 o'clock. They're in the same position. Okay. This one, oh, here's another one right here. Um, this one has the wide bearing. Now, what I mean by wide bearing, I mean wider than the rest of the bearings. Okay, this is the bearing that goes on the PTO side. If you line it up with the mag side, see that difference? A little bit wider. So these newer ones that have this taper, this keyway set up, have a wide bearing on the magneto side. So this one, these two crankshafts, these two crankshafts here are the same. This one's just broken here, and the bearings are wore, the shaft is wore, the bearings are falling off. So the biggest difference is between these two, this one and that one. Which style do you have? You can't put a wide bearing crank in cases that are set up for the narrow bearing. Won't fit, okay? Uh, you could probably try to put this one in that one, but I don't know why you'd want to do that because you want wide bearing. The more support, the better. They did it for a reason. They've been building engines for a long time. But these are all Fuji engine um, cranks. Just we have lots of, I don't know, miss. I just wanted to share a video with you to let you know there's three different options out there. The old style, and you can know easily by identifying the PTO size. That size will determine if it's this or if it's that. And then if you have this style, we can go from there learning if you have a wide bearing on the magneto side or if you have the narrow bearing. Okay. Anyway, guys, I hope this will clear up a little of the miss, I don't know, miss clarification or the confusion that's out there. Now they all have the same stroke. I believe it's all a 60 millimeter stroke across the board. So something else to keep in mind. Anyway, if you have any questions about it, shoot me an email, snowxparts at gmail.com. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See ya.